Good morning, everyone. It is actually Thursday afternoon, late afternoon for me, but as you can notice, I couldn't make it to be with you to, uh, today for reasons out of my control, so I really wanted to present my apologies about it and to thank uh, the organizer for inviting me. I really wanted to be here today with you because I've been fascinated by the Italian case, and when I say case, I almost mean an empirical case that deserves some some investigation about to understand how it is possible in the 21st century to have a national discipline so resistant to the integration of gender and politics research within the discipline. And I'm talking here in my capacity of convener of the European Conference of Politics and Gender and former convener of the ECPR standing groups on gender and politics. And I think I can safely say that I can almost count on my hands the number of scholars based in Italy who have presented at ECPG, so the European Conference, over the last editions that actually I convened. And it's not that they don't exist, it's that either they are based outside Italy, or they are hiding their gender interest, because they still want to make a career in Italy, or they are based in other disciplines than political science, and they don't really see the point of going to the European Conference of Gender and Politics. So this has been something that I really talk with Italian colleagues outside gender and politics. I always say, hey, where is gender and politics in Italy? How is that possible? I also talk with young scholars based in Italy, asking them, how is it for you? And they usually say to me, well, this is hard. Usually I'm recommended not to study gender and politics if I want to stay within the system. So this is a very sad situation. So what I thought is that here I could share some of my experience and insight about leading the European community with you. I'm going to say hi a lot of time, but this is not me. This is a group of scholars who work really, really hard all together to make the gender community grow bigger at the European level. These scholars are Lisa Muguet, Karen Selis, Elizabeth Evans, and also the great organizer of ECPG, which are, for instance, Martina Avanza or Eleanor Lepina, just to, not, to cite only two, uh, two names. So when I took over the group uh, about 10 years ago, nine years ago, I I kind of thought we needed a strategy, a double strategy, a double process. We needed on one hand to get more space within the discipline, and on the other hand, we needed to give more space within the gender community to different kind of scholars, different kind of research. So that's what I'm going to focus on today, is really about these double space processes. So the first process was really with, within the discipline and to take this space. Uh, when I took over the standing group at ECPR, we were already quite a large community, about 350 people, but the space we were given on the program was small like this. Uh, we had very few panels, so we really wanted to take that space, and we did it. We tried to organize, mobilize, to have more panels submitted to the General Conference. We also lobbied a lot the ECPR uh, executive to have more space in terms of plenary events, roundtables about gender uh, in, the, uh, in the program. We also work really hard to launch the European Journal of Politics and Gender, and now it has happened. I hope you all have your subscription via university. Please think you do it, because we need to be able to keep this space. And we also work really hard in terms of symbolic recognition, symbolic space. And here I'm talking about prizes and awards uh, in associations. And when you look at the prizes and awards at ECPR, 10 years ago, not a single gender scholar got anything. So the first thing I did was to launch the Johnny Lovendusky Prize for the best PhD in gender and politics. This prize has been endorsed by the ECPR, is now standing on equal footing with the Jean Blondel, which is a PhD prize for political science. This is actually quite small. Huh? It's only one person who gets it every other year. But in terms of symbolic, it has put gender and politics 
on the map of ECPR awards. And this is really what I wanted. So it was really this strategy of taking this space without asking for it, without waiting for anybody to give us, but really take that space as big as we could, as fast as we could. And I think on that perspective, it has been quite successful over the last 10 years. But the other challenge was actually to give more space within the gender and politics community to all different kinds of scholars who were not represented well enough within our community, who did not have the privileged position in academic systems to give them space. And we really also work really hard on that. And here I'm going to focus on three different kinds of scholars. So the first group of scholars were, of course, regional representation. Now, ECPG used to be a very um, conference focused on the UK, Germany, Netherlands, and all the system where political science is very well established, but not Italy. We really try really hard to have more scholars from Eastern Europe, but also more scholars from the south of Europe. For us, it was really important that we we're going to be more inclusive in terms of geographical representation. And it's just not because it matters to have people from Hungary. It's actually because scholars from Hungary, they are as good as we are. So they need the space they deserve, like we do. So it was the first thing. The second thing was also in increased representation or diversity in methods. Huh? The community used to be quite qualitative oriented. We really work really hard to get more quant analysis in, but we also work really hard to get more sophisticated methods in terms of qualitative in inquiry. And here I mean like ethnographic methods. Ten years ago, there were barely anyone at ECPG who were doing ethnography, ethnographic research. And I think now this is changing. So it's not that we are becoming method oriented or method obsessed, but actually now we are able to welcome all different kind of work, all different kind of research using all different kind of method. And this is making our field stronger and better. The third giving space strategy that I really wanted to implement and I was really dear to my heart was actually, <clears throat> sorry, <coughs> to open uh, the conference to sexuality research. In the very beginning of ECPG, there were barely any sexuality LGBT scholars who were attending it, uh, attending ECPG, and this is something I wanted to change in the get-go. As soon as I got appointed convener, that was almost my obsession, was to give this space to sexuality research because it's such fascinating research, and we were not listening to them. So we created a special section well, not a special section, we use another section of the conference, LGBT rights and politics. And of course, I was helped tremendously by David Paternot and Roman Kuhar, who was the inaugural chairs for two editions of ECPG, to really start this section. And I think I can say now that after four times we had this section, that I hope sexuality scholars feel at home within gender and politics research because they are as much deserving their space than we are. It's always a question of, we deserve the space, but lots of other people deserve it too, and we need to give it. So that was really this idea of taking the space within the discipline of political science, but also giving this space within the community of, Poica, of gender and politics research in order to make our community stronger, bigger, but also more interesting, I think, at the end of the day. For me, as far as I'm concerned, ECPG, I had a blast in Amsterdam, and it's also because I had all this different kind of research that I could go and listen to. That was not necessarily always the case in, at the very beginning. So it takes time. Huh? It's a collective effort to take the space and to give the space at the same time to um, other kind of research and scholars. Just to conclude, I had a few uh, thoughts about CISP and about how to make the Italian community in general politics square. And I think the first thing you need to do is to get that space, get 
as much space as you can dream of and even add 10% more just to get sure that you are actually really getting what you deserve. Take the space on the program of CISP. Lobby for having a round table. Huh? A plenary event. It may not happen for next year, but start today to get it in two years, to get it in three years. It takes a lot of time to make an institution change and move. Believe me, start today to get something in two, three or four years. Never forget your target. Your target is take the space. We insist within the community of scholars in Italy. Take it. Apply for funding, huh? for funding support to, to pay for speakers. All these kind of things to become more exclusive. Go for everything you see. And if you don't see any opportunities, create them. Suggest to see new way of doing plenary events or sponsoring plenary events organized by the Gender and Politics Group. Take the space. Don't wait for them to give it to you. Take it. Take it as big as you can dream of. We're thinking maybe something special issue for the Italian Review. That would be something really nice. It has recently changed editors. They may be interested in actually getting a couple of submissions in gender because what we can see is that EGPR, APSR, have gender scholars as editors. So maybe the Italian Review will be interested in actually getting into the train of gender and politics before it's too late. Talk with them, make an issue, we'd be really happy to contribute with a piece. Think about your own group, be as inclusive as you can. Push the boundaries of gender and politics. Change the definition of what the political is. Invite people from other disciplines. I think as long as they study the political one way or the other, they are part of our community. But we need to give them signs that actually we welcome their research and they are part of, of the group. So it really means take this space with SIPs, SIPs with the, with, the, with the community of political science, but also give the space within gender and polit politics research to as many scholars as you can in order to grow bigger and better. And I would say in the case of Italy, ask for review, ask for assessment, get data. How many scholars do you have in gender and politics? How many PhD students in gender and politics? How many scholars stay after the PhD? How many scholars in gender and politics get promoted up to full professors? That's not going to take you a lot of time because we know that there are not that many. Look at whether you can have data about the qualification committee or the promotion committee, this committee that decide more or less your fate in Italy, whether you can make it to, um, into the system and whether you can get promoted. Try to see how many scholars having a gender component in their research portfolio actually got qualified to apply for jobs in Italy and then got qualified to be promoted in the academic system. I think if you get data, if you get some sort of objective assessment, then this is not going to be your problem anymore. This is going to be the problem of the discipline in Italy. They will have no other choice than actually see that there is a huge problem with gender politics research in Italy and that if nobody walks together, if we do not walk together to change the situation, to solve this problem, the problem will keep going on and going on and going on in the next decades. And that will be very sad. So my thing, my last point, and I'm really concluding, is get the space. Don't wait for them to give it to you. Actually, they will be quite willing to give it to you. This is what I realized. But just go for it and they will support you. Lobby, use critical allies, talk to as many political scientists as you know, explain how gender is great, explain that this is a new field of research, give the space within your community, invite people, welcome them, be open to all sorts of approaches in terms of theories, methods of topics. This is this doable process, but really go with your dreams. Go what you will, what you want to do. As long as you do it for the sake of the community, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be bad. It can all be really good. Do, do your dreams. Get, have dreams. Go for it. Fight for it. Talk with people. Nobody is the enemy. Everybody is a potential allies. Be inclusive.
I hope that wasn't too long and have a very nice uh, end of one table.